Shalom and all praise to the Most High, Creator of Heaven and Earth, and all the things therein. Y'all know every Wednesday I hit up the live or the stories based on something the Spirit revealed to me by, via, you know, Bible, via conversation, via experience. And this week I want to specifically do a part two to spiritual warfare in which I covered a while back. I'm not sure if you caught that, but either way, I'm going to be going deep into spiritual warfare today. Don't miss it. And last time I covered spiritual warfare, I, I went and, you know, expressed some of the things that I know from studying the enemy. Like I study certain things based on certain videos I watch on how to how demons operate, the principalities of heaven, how they move, how they operate. Now, let's go to our book, which is Ephesians six. And Paul is telling you how to combat or oppose negative spiritual warfare. Right. I'm going to show you. So right here, I go to Ephesians 6, right? Starting at verse 10, right? I'm going to skim through it, but I'm going to explain. Finally, my brethren, be strong, strong in the most high and in the power of his might. So right off the bat, Paul is telling you what he's about to tell you is the might of and the power of the most high. Put on the whole armor of the most high. This is not ordinary armor. This is spiritual armor. If the most high is using it as armor, it has to be spiritual because most high is the spiritual being. Follow me, right? That you may be able to stand against the wiles of Hashatan. Stand is such a dominant word. It, it's a strength filled word. This is not something that you need to tap into to actually be docile with. This is something that you utilize when it's time for battle. Right. Follow me. Verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Once again, spiritual. But against principalities, against powers, and against rulers of the darkness of this world. So if he's saying principalities, and he's saying power, and he's saying rulers, you got to realize there's a hierarchy. Everything you're dealing with in the spiritual realm is not the same, right? So let's continue. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. So that is, that's, that's a prime proof that everything that's wicked ain't always low. Sometimes they're in high positions or places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of the Most High that you may be able to withstand once again in the evil day, evil day being temptation or wickedness and having done all to stand. He repeated the word stand three times. This is a very defensive expression, which makes you see which. Like I said, he repeated the word stand three times, which expresses that this is a very defensive expression. This is not something of wisdom he's giving you. This is something of war that he's giving you. These are tactics. This is very strategic. And the next verse, he actually goes into the specifics of armor that covers a specific part of the body. And if you really think and, and read it very slowly, the mysteries of the Most High start to be revealed to the part of the body and why that needs this specific armor. I'm going to show you. And immediately, the next verse says, stand therefore again. You see what I'm saying? Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Okay, where's the location of, where's the location of your loins? It's in the reproductive area or in your kidney area. And if you do further research on what function the kidney provides, sexuality comes up very quickly, right? Not to be too crude. But with that being said, why does an area like that needs to be girt with truth? Because truth is a light. And once you expose truth to a situation like lust, it quickly dissolved. Am I horny or am I being controlled by an external force? Do I really want to have sex and disobey the most high? Or am I, is my body just desiring and craving appetite that it was used to? You got to realize that truth exposes a lot even within you so if you girton your sexual organs with truth it's not long before you see that this is a failed plan moving on to the breastplate of righteousness right if you look at a breastplate what does it cover it covers your whole torso now what what within you within your torso needs to be protected with righteousness uh your heart uh, your stomach, a man who can rule his heart rules his emotion and a man who rules his stomach rules his desire. 
So if you have righteousness protecting your heart and protecting your appetite, how many things would you, will you crave for that's wicked? How many things that you would desire that should be righteous? Weigh the two and understand that a breastplate, the function of a breastplate is a defense for the things behind it. Understand what Paul is saying. Cover your breastplate with righteousness. Verse 15, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. So my feet has to be covered with the preparation of gospel of peace. Why is that? Because the Most High knows that our feet are quick to run and do evil, quick to gossip, quick to debate, quick to fight, quick to envy. So if we are preparing our feet with peace, how can we not go in the way of peace? That means everywhere your feet trods, it needs to be peace there. Now, 16, it says above all, meaning more important than the things before and more important than things that's coming after. Taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. So faith is a shield. What does the shield cover? Everything. Everything. Now, everything that I've named up to this point have been defensive. Correct? It's been defensive. So the shield of faith, if this is a spiritual war and sh the faith is literally compared to a shield, then what is the opposing of that? What is the arrow? What is the sword? What is the bullet? Doubt, lies, deception. Remember, he said above all, faith is able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. He's expressing to you what you're going to need on this battlefield as a protection above all. And immediately after faith, he goes into the helmet of salvation. Um, where does a helmet cover? Your mind. A helmet covers your mind. So if the, the thing that covers your mind is salvation, what else thoughts have permission to enter therein? So when you face with temptation and you think it's salvation, you're going to pass that temptation. If, you, if you're facing a uh, doubt or you're facing war or you're facing lack of peace or arguments or anything that tempts your spirit to do wickedness and on your helmet is salvation 24 seven is on your mind. What are the chances of you spiritually being successful? That now he's saying that should be your helmet. Now, as I said, everything I've stated this far has been a defensive mechanism towards Hashitan. Now, what's an offensive mechanism, like a weapon, like a gun, like a knife, like a sword, right? 17, right? No, 18. No, 17. And the sword of the spirit, which is the word of the most high. So this should be your only offense. That's that's very deep when you think about it. He just taught me how to defend my breastplate, my loins, my feet, my head, my body with the shield. Now he's showing you what to attack with, what to be offensive with the sword, which is the word of the most high. So if I'm regurgitating what the Abba says, right, how can I offend you? He's our sword. What he said is our sword. That's genius. That's genius. If you think about it now, after you have covered all the bases, according to Ephesians 6, 10 and on, right? What is your next instruction to do? 18. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching there unto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. So we're not supposed to be just willy nilly. We're supposed to wake up every single morning understanding that I am waking up in a spiritual war that wants my soul. We're supposed to be praying and watching, watching, observing. Watch what you're giving your attention to. Because those who watch, those who watch in war are most likely to succeed in war. Those who slumber in war are most likely to be overtaken. So if you're waking up and you're not even realize that you're in a spiritual war, chances are you already lost, bro. Sis, you already lost. All in all, you have to make sure you're on the right side of the war. So I'm going to tie this back into repentance. You must repent according to the most high. If you're doing things that he is not pleased with, stop. If you should be doing things that he is pleased with, but you're not doing it, 
begin. Leave the past where it is and move forward in full repentance and then put on this this um armor of the most high to fight on the right side. Shalom.